what is going on everyone welcome back we are going to be checking out guild wars it apparently has been adjusted so you can actually participate before you know if you weren't on around reset you weren't able to get your attacks in because the war was already over so for the most part as long as the matchup is pretty even on both sides as long as you're not getting destroyed you will be able to get your attacks in so i'm excited to bring some Guild Wars action to you guys all. If you do enjoy the video, make sure you thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe. Let's get started. Alrighty, guys. So it looks like Minutemen, day two of the season one Guild Wars ranking. We're rank one so far, but we kind of have an easy opponent. Our first matchup, so we got bumped up quite a bit. We're facing GGWP. I think that stands for good game well played. We, uh, yeah, we can't really underestimate these guys. I know a lot of these players are super strong end game, high ranked RTA guys. So yeah, we're gonna have to be careful. Uh, just a quick little summary of Guild Wars for you guys just tuning in. Maybe you haven't even tried the game mode because you weren't able to, you weren't able to wake up before uh, your match was over. Each win is going to be worth 25% of the tower's HP bar. A draw is going to be 10%, and then a defeat is zero. So if we do quick maths, a HP tower is 100%. That means it's going to take four wins to take a tower down. It's going to take 10 draws to take a tower down. So the strategy for a lot of the high-ranked guilds they're going to mostly just focus the weaker towers, really, and just leave the strong guys left alone completely. And as long as, you know, you're winning on this HP bar up top, once the countdown hits zero, then you've won the battle. So if you aren't super OP and you're not going to be able to full clear the guild, that's going to be the strategy. So keep that in mind, guys. Now for our first target, our first opponent, we're going to take down s silver uh the top i mean there's a lot of lds here guys it's gonna like it's gonna be it's gonna be super difficult to attempt these teams without using lds so i mean the bottom one i'm gonna probably try to mirror just because this guy's got twins we're gonna we also have twins let's see who has the better twins now for the top team halia on defense they did release a newer elite that I'm excited to try today because I feel like he's going to be countering any Halia without a Lightning on defense completely. We might completely lose here. So uh, let me just re-gear my guys real quick and I'll be right back with the teams. For this top team, we are going to need something to kind of cleanse the RNG stuns from Dark Orc. I'm thinking Royce. Maybe Kelowna if you do have those LD epics. And then we do need to kind of play around Halia. We either contest for speed one or we try to do some fun shenanigans on turn two. And they just came out with a new elite that I feel like is going to be really, really strong for her. And then, you know, Holy Yolanda. If you can outspeed her or if you can maybe cut in and bump your DPS before her, you can easily one shot as long as you have a multi hitter like Baron. For Dark Nick, if you have someone that applies no positive effect debuff or just kills through the death immunity like Borden, Thor, Shark Andre, then you're pretty much set to go. So as long as we play around that, and like I said, we're just going to mirror this bottom team. Twins plus Atara, great mitigation, lots of damage, so uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a close one. Here is going to be our full team. We've got Royce for the cleanse, we've got Baron for the damage. We have this new dark elite. I feel like, you know, we, we might win. The main idea is with this trait here, when attacked by the enemy with the highest speed, moves the ally with the highest attack to the top of the action queue. Ideally, you know, Halia's gonna move. She's gonna ult AoE, right? That's gonna hit this, this elite guy. Uh, he's gonna bump Baron because she has the highest attack on the team. And we're just gonna be able to do big, big damage. We've also got Royce just in case any random crowd control happens from Dark Orc. And he also can deal pretty well against uh, Dark Orc as well. He can 
hit pretty hard with his ultimate. And then once again, we've got Borden for Dark Nick. I'm excited, guys. For our spells, Rage Aura, we're going to use that on Baron once Baron hopefully gets the turn. This this might be a complete int, or this might be a five-head move. Let's see. Okay, we are in. Looks like Borden does get CC'd by Dark Orc, so that's why Royce is super duper strong here. But also, if you guys did not see that interaction, Dark Orc actually activated. Hold on here. Dark Orc actually activated the bonus turn from uh, our, our new elite guy. I guess Halia didn't even have to move. This is a sweet interaction. So we could just go ahead and rage aura here. And then, you know, everyone's alive. This is what's super nice about Baron is if uh, all the enemies are still there, her passive is gonna launch another AOE. She's gonna do a lot of ignore defense. And this is why she's also really strong against Holy Yolandas, cause you could one shot them. Whereas if you're bringing in a Urion, he actually doesn't have multi hits, so he, he can't really do much. And here we are, we've got Royce. I've got Royce built on a Dragon Scale Bruiser set, so let's see how much we can hit here. 10k, so not too shabby. Borden does kill through death immunity, so goodbye Dark Nick. And so far, I guess, yeah, this, this elite guy is so stacked. Oh my gosh, he's gonna be the MVP for sure. He has... We just looked at his trait, really, right? We were just taking advantage of lightning retaliation, but he also has an ultimate with a speed up and an attack up. He's also got an irresistible stun. If the target speed is lower, which if you you know build him triple raider, he's always going to stun that dark orc there. And he also has a speed down. So this elite is a great addition, guys. Let me know down below in the comments if you're having fun with any of the other elites, because there are a few good ones that we haven't checked out. So we're going into round two, uh, Light Nick. We do outspeed them because my Dark Ophelia is around 380 speed. So there's, it's not too often that we do get outsped. We're actually going to Rage Aura Light Nick and just see how much damage we can do. Because if we can kill that Dark Ophelia, then pretty much the game has been won as long as we can sustain. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've seen a lot of people use Fire Meliza, a really fast triple raider, fully booked Fire Meliza. You know, you want to hit around 400 speed because like I said, guys, my Dark Ophelia is 380. People are getting super fast nowadays, so try to aim for 400. Um, that's, that's not too hard. I think you have to hit like 290 speed on her because she does get extra speed with her trait. But Fire Meliza, Agile Leap in 20 are really strong AoE nukers like Baron, like Garanol, like Urion, and that's kind of how people are dealing with uh, these Dark Ophelia compositions. So now we can just go ahead and ult. We're going to do a lot of big damage with our Dark Ophelia because we do have her built on some crit damage as well. And, you know, the, the battle is basically won. So GG Silver. Our second matchup is going to be against Scala. We've got a light Nick, so I, you know, I love using Fire Borden against him. We've got Royce. Uh, particularly, we don't really have to worry about him as long as we're not bringing in heavy control. We have Nero. He is a five, so we have to worry about him outspeeding us for sure because he does subtract 15 of my team's speed. And then we have a Alessia. So Alessia is super strong against any supports generally, as well as wood heroes. So this is a super strong team on the top team. We've got Zoltan, um, not quite sure who this guy is. I know he does have an ability to keep someone alive after taking a fatal hit. So that's kind of all we're gonna have to really worry about, hopefully. Or maybe we should check his kid out, I don't know. We've got Kelowna here too. That's gonna help him against control, but as long as we're not bringing in heavy control, or if, you know, her cleansing, as long as that doesn't hinder our game plan and we're totally fine we also have cordelia i personally love bringing in royce or cordelia or sorry i personally love bringing in royce or Kelowna for cordelia um there are definitely other cleansers for sure i know simma's becoming more popular and i'm sure they're coming out with more 
heroes, more cleansers as we speak, guys, because they're coming out with a lot of heroes. Anyways, let's get to the battle. So we have Borden, Talia, Nero, Rick. We're going heavy aggressive on the top. So Borden's for light Nick. We've got Halia because our game plan is going to hopefully be that we outspeed. We've got her on a, our fastest triple raider set. And we also brought in A5 Nero to kind of even the playing grounds. And we have Rick to kind of hopefully take care of that Nero. On the bottom team, we've got Royce for the cleanse once again for Cordelia. We also have Baron for the big damage. And also the ignore defense is really strong against Zoltan. We have our new favorite elite hero because why not? You know, we're, it's going to be a showcase, okay? We are showcasing our new friend. I'm going to learn his name, Storm Falcon. Storm Falcon is OP. Build him up. He's great. He's like a, I would say he's better than Windstrix almost just because of his trait, yeah? And then, and then we also have Atara for the mitigation. And then once again, her ultimate can nuke zoltan's down and i assume that's probably his game plan to have zoltan kind of solo us so without further ado let's go let's see if we int what do you guys think Ooh, hold on hold on we actually are inting we started off with okay that's kind of dumb they should uh show you whether or not it's going to start the battle with auto they should have a button that says auto enabled auto disabled okay that's kind of stupid because okay we're gonna have to kill lightning but he's just gonna get brought back to life it's gonna be okay though because alessia will not be able to target rick though because that's really all that matters uh maybe is that all that matters? I don't know, guys. We might have lost. I I definitely inted. Oh my gosh, that... Okay, well, that was a total L on our part. Guys, make sure you watch out for starting the battle off in auto. Lesson learned for us. So anyways, uh, Cordelia did morph. However, Royce did cleanse. We can do something here. We can either, hmm, what do we want to do? I, I definitely don't want to speed these guys up. So maybe we just go into, hmm, where do we go? I, let's just start working Zoltan down. We're going to work the threat down, even though that probably wasn't the smartest move because he does counter and steal things. Totally forgot about that, but so A-OK, -okay. we, we might just completely end this battle let's see we speed up i think we go, we go for the ult here uh we aren't able to cut with our baron unfortunately but it looks like royce does cleanse the debuff that this light epic dude power suppression that's sweet so kind of a psa to you guys this is a newer debuff that was just implemented attacks are guaranteed to be deflected uh, that would have hindered our game plan completely Completely, a thousand percent. Oh, uh, hold on. It looks like did did he get invincibility as well? Okay, we, we are kind of inting right now, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching us, yeah, this is this is a total epic fail. Wow, really good, strong defense. So we have our third and final match. We're hitting Mad Doc Alex. We're out for blood, okay? We've got to redeem ourselves. Otherwise, we're going to get kicked for minute, man. Let's be honest. I'm just kidding. However, uh, we, we've got our first match. We've got, like I said, we've got to redeem ourselves. Full Whale, Twins, Lightnik, Full Yolanda, Bees Knees, just because he also has pretty heavy LDs on the top. Dark Ophelia, he's trying to outspeed me. Dark Hazel, he's trying to kill me with his his counters and his revives. And then he's got Dark Nick. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna just handle that with uh, with the LD business. Uh, we've got the bottom one as well. Shark Andre, Nero, Tara. Double mitigation here. Double Bruisers. We're gonna go ahead and try to see if we can break this turtle with garinal 
We've also got Shane to buff her up. We're bringing in Agile Leap to go straight into her to see how much damage she can do. She's on Avery's set. Uh, Crazed is kind of here to help us against Ralph. Pretty much his role is to strip the buffs. That's that's it. He's nice because he's tanky. He can also do damage. If yours is A2, there's kind of a wombo combo with the dragon skill set. We might have to make a dedicated video on that. But anyways, we've got Methasia just to help us stay alive, keep sustained, maybe even potentially revive us. I'm curious to see how we can do. It's kind of on Garenol right now. Whether or not she can kill Shark Andre. If she can, I feel like it's a win from there. But if not, it's going to be a tough time. Top team for spells, we've got Rage Aura, Revive, Bottom, Agile Leap, Revive. I feel like this might be meta but it also really depends on your team composition let's get into this okay gotta win this matchup um it's kind of cool i don't know if you guys saw that but they did implement it to where true strike is actually now in effect in pvp as well as pvp leader skills so that was a great adjustment thank you ace for listening to feedback so to start off the battle uh let's just go ahead and rage aura light nick Usually you don't want to do that just because Dark Nick might uh, do big, big damage, but I'm kind of confident in, I'm really confident in this team one. Twins are super duper broken if you have both of them. And then Light Yolanda with her invincibility on her skill two is just going to completely protect us. We could even go further and apply a decreased damage dealt debuff by Light Ophelia. And yeah, this battle is won. So here's the tricky part. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I forgot to gear up Shane. No way. All right, we're at a severe disadvantage. We're at a severe disadvantage now. Um, hmm. What do we do? I think we just have to go straight into... Yeah, yeah, we definitely had to do that. Well, okay. Okay, we redeemed ourselves. Never mind. Nothing to see here. Garenol's still the queen of PvP. Make sure you build her up. Avarice set. Every set. Uh, as high as attack as you can. Crit capped, crit damage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somehow we were able to snag that last win. So, just a little quick summary. We hit silver. GG. Scala. Man, your defense is really, really fun. Unfortunately, I entered. We tried to try new things. We tried to do the Storm Falcon showcase. The debut ended how typical debuts end. We we entered. Uh, we hit Mad Doc Alex. We were able to take the win down. 28% right now. You, I know you guys can't see it, but it's 28% for GG well played. And it is. Hold on. Maybe I can just. There you go. 28% versus 62%. We've got six hours left. It's going to be a close matchup. Um, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what team comps you were using. Let me know how much I entered. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.